Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Real quick, before I get into this video, I want to tell you about PopCultureZone.com. They are a website specializing in comic books, some of the hottest variants, and CGC comics. And for those raw comics, if you are shipping to the domestic United States, you only pay $4.99 flat rate shipping. PopCultureZone.com. Now on to the video. What is going on guys, it's Brown Street Men's Comics, back once again to give you my picks for comics that hit in final order cutoff this coming Monday night. Have some great picks this week, got a new series from Image Comics I'm really looking forward to, as well as a variant month from Marvel that I am actually excited for. I don't get excited about those monthly variants too much. I did like the Miles Morales 10th anniversary variants, but we have one here that pure nostalgia level and I'll get into that in a minute but right now let's jump right into it starting with Image Comics. We get a new series and it's A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance number one. That's right coming off a of deadly class. We get a new Rick Remender series. I'm excited for this one. We got all the great things that make a great story in my opinion. We get a little vigilante justice. We have some dark web. We have some assassinations. We have some hitman and we have a good guy that just wants to do the right thing and mess people up and on top of it all it's written by rick remender so i am definitely on board there's some great covers for it there's also a one in 50 incentive variant for it but either way righteous thirst for vengeance hits foc this monday night also coming from dark horse we get last flight out number two interviewed the creator mark guggenheim of last flight out on this channel before FOC, included last flight out number one in this very video series suggesting people pre-order it and sure enough, sold out at Dime. And that first issue, a lot of people said they couldn't find it on release day. And now I know different geographic locations might differ from what was available and what wasn't, but the wide consensus was people are having a hard time finding it. Issue number two is just as good as issue number one. Hit hits FOC this Monday night. So get your pre-order in and guarantee yourself a copy. This is issue two of a six issue mini series, but don't let a mini series persuade you from not picking this up and reading it. I guarantee this is one great series. And that old stigma of, oh, it's just a mini series is long gone these days. People are loving them. And you never know, there might be a volume two that comes down the road. Either way, last flight out, number two, hits FOC as well this Monday night. Getting over to Marvel, we get Amazing Spider-Man number 75. Here we have Ben Riley coming back to New York City, taking over the mantle of Spider-Man. But what does that mean for Peter Parker? I haven't been a huge fan of this regular Spider-Man series. There's been hit issues. There's been some hit covers. If you're a fan of those Patrick Gleason covers, there is one of those Patrick Gleason covers for Amazing Spider-Man number 75, as well as a bunch of other covers. This is written. This is being written by Zeb Wells. I haven't been a huge fan of Nick Spencer's Spider-Man, but I don't hold that against Nick Spencer. I just think Spider-Man in general, that main title, it's hard to write. I mean, same with Superman, some of those characters. It's like, they've been around that long. The stories can't be too much different. But either way, Spider-Man number 75, I'm kind of excited about the Ben Riley Spider-Man and what we got going into the fall with the whole Spider-Man story arcs. I'm still more of a Miles Morales fan, but Amazing Spider-Man number 75 has some great covers. And if this is something that you're interested in, I always advise pick the cover you like and then add that to your collection. Also from Marvel, one of my favorite writers right now, Tom Taylor, we get Dark Ages number two. Really, really enjoyed the first issue. I'm excited for this Marvel event. It's been a while since I've enjoyed those event series. I did, as I said before, I did like War of the Realms. My problem a lot of times with these Marvel event stories is they are great to begin with and then they kind of fizzle off and I end up not being a big fan of how they end, but I have faith in Tom Taylor. If you picked up issue number one, let me know what you guys thought of that. I enjoyed it, so I'm definitely writing this one out. And like I said, I'm a big fan of Tom Taylor, so I'm sticking, the, I'm sticking with him on this one. And then from Boom Studios, here's a title a lot of people have been looking for. That's right, we get House of Slaughter number one. Yes, we got that free comic book day issue, kind of wet the appetite, but here we are getting that spinoff from Boom Studios. Something is Killing the Children, one of the hottest series right now. Spinning out of that, we get this House of Slaughter number one, and it's got some great covers. A lot of people are well aware of those covers. A lot of people like those Jenny Friesen covers, but just recently, 
Boom Studios did add a 1 in 1000 Gabrielle Del Auto variant, and it's just as high as you would imagine it would be. You got a hot story, you got a hot writer, you got a hot artist, and it's high ratio. There's going to be a lot of copies of this book ordered, no doubt. But if you're a fan and that's something you want to pursue, no one's going to knock you for doing it because it's your collection, it's your money, you buy what you like, and I love that cover myself. But House of Slaughter is finally getting final order cut off, which means it is almost hitting store shelves. Also sticking with some independent comics from Aftershock, we get Chicken Devil number one. Premise of this book looks super great to me, just like the first book talked about with Vigilante Justice. Here we have a guy, just your normal guy, married with two children, and he owns a successful chain of chicken restaurants, but come to find out his business partner is in with the mob and owes them $2 million. And we get to find out if this normal guy has what it takes to defend his family against cold-blooded mobsters. Kinda has a Breaking Bad type sense to me, but either way, Love the cover on this one, love the premise. So I'm definitely pre-ordering this one. And it being Aftershock, sometimes they don't print a lot of copies for this, so this is definitely a prime candidate for pre-ordering before final or cutoff to guarantee yourself a copy. Then I have one DC book this week, and that's right, we are talking about that James Tynan goodness. We get Nice House on the Lake number five. Ever since issue one and issue two, like the big viral internet fan buzz about the series has kind of trickled down a little bit, but you tend to see that often as the series carries on into issues, but that doesn't mean the series has gotten any less as far as quality and great writing. This series is still fantastic. Issue number five, I'll admit I haven't talked about the past few issues even in this video series, but here's one. James Tynan, Nice House on the Lake, Horror Comics, DC Black Label, continue to pick this up, and Remember, this hits FOC Sunday instead of Monday. And one last thing I want to talk about, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Marvel's monthly variant starting to hit FOC this week is those Joe Jusco 1992 Marvel Masterpiece cards are going to be variant covers for multiple series that are starting to hit FOC this coming Monday. If you're a fan of Joe Jusco, if you're a fan of those 1992 Marvel Masterpiece cards, this is something you might be interested in. They have a few that are hitting FOC this week and will carry on throughout the month. Pure nostalgia buy on my part. Love Joe Jusco. Love those 1992 Masterpiece cards. So this is something I'm adding to my collection and pre-order an FOC. Hope to get that discount. So I'm not paying cover price or trying to find them if the, at the comic book store on release day. Which is also gonna bring me to the late printings this week. I actually only have one on the list, so I'm sure I overlooked some, but from Image Comics, we get that Echo Lands number one getting the second print. So there it is, guys. My picks for comic books are heading final order cutoff this coming Monday night, again, Sunday for that DC comic, Nice House on the Lake. But either way, let me know in the comments, what are you guys reading? What are you guys pre-ordering? And with that being said, this is Brown of Men's Comics. I'll see you guys in the next video. I think you only love me cause I'm popping. This a layup, this a rebound, then it's robbing. Tasting with the fade, not the air, my hands rocking. When I link with ball point, you know it's not.